A man who doesn't need any grilling right now because he's got this huge heart and a lot of sincerity and you're going to hear it right now. So please, a warm welcome to the stage, Vice President of Operations at Certified General Accountants of Ontario, ladies and gentlemen, J.D. Clark. Um, good evening everyone. As Suhanna mentioned, my name is J.D. Clark and I'm the Senior Vice President of Operations at the Certified General Accountants of Ontario. And it is my pleasure to be here with you this evening at the Pioneers of Change Awards. CJ Ontario is a long time and very proud sponsor of Skills for Change and we've been a sponsor for the Pioneer as of Change Award uh, since 1999 and we are very excited to be here again uh, this year. So now I'd like to get right into uh, the first award uh, of the evening and that's the Wim Award for Women in Leadership. And our first honoree is a world-renowned artist and leader in the art community. An undeniable talent, Maya Eventoff began her artistic journey at the young age of six in her hometown of Moscow. After excelling in art as a child, Maya was accepted at the, pre at the prestigious high school that was affiliated with the St. Petersburg State Academy of Industrial and Applied Art. She graduated in 1987 with a master's degree in graphic art and began illustrating children's books. She took part in creating murals for concert halls in Moscow, Leningrad, and a few other cities that are listed, but I know if I pronounce them, I will butcher them. So I'm just going to stop with those two. <laughs> so Maya immigrated to Canada in 1990 and resides here with her husband and two children. Her style of work has changed over the past 10 years, much of which she attributes to the happy, safe, and secure life she found in North America. And some of her wonderful work is on display as part of the silent auctions. It's truly uh, uh, fantastic. Her work has been exhibited in many of the finest galleries in North America, and her paintings can be found in the private collections of individuals such as the Right Honorable Jean Chrétien, George and Laura Bush, and Oscar Peterson, just to name a few. So please join me in congratulating the wonderful and talented Maya Eventop. When I learned that I was getting this award, I started to think, what being a woman in leadership means to me. It made me realize how lucky I am to be surrounded by some very strong and outstanding women all my life. First, my grandmothers. They lived in the most troubled time in Russian history. Maria followed my grandfather to the trenches of World War II with my father, still a toddler. Anna raised her family as a wife of the enemy of the state. She watched her husband taken away and later executed by Stalin's regime on a bogus charge. She escaped approaching German army, and she kept her kids alive by making and selling belts in Siberia. She, who was a musician and a journalist, adored and spoiled by her husband, one of the big Communist Party officials before his arrest. I owe my survival skills to her. She was the brightest person I ever knew. And up until her death at the age of 96 in Toronto, I knew who to call with any question. My mother, Mary, is an engineer by education, but she passionately loves art. Since I was a young child, we spent countless hours together exploring the treasures of Leningrad museums. She recognized my interest in art very early on and nurtured it ever since. She enrolled me in art classes from grade one and she worked tirelessly in finding the best art school and teachers for me. It was never a question in my parents' mind what to buy, a pair of new winter boots for my mom or a set of paints and brushes for me. <laughs> Sometimes they were spending a quarter of my father's salary on coveted Mitya Shavala's master classes, whose influence you can still see in every each of my paintings. My mom was a well-respected and revered professor, one of very few civilians and females in the military academy. I grew up watching her give lectures to auditoriums full of men, high-ranking military officials from different countries. When I was 15, I met my mother-in-law, Paulina, for the first time. She is a survivor of the siege of Leningrad. She continued attending medical school during the siege, starving and getting there, sometimes with bombs nearly missing her. At night, she, at the age of 17, patrolled the roofs of the buildings, putting out fire bombs. 
She raised her son alone after her husband's death while working full-time as pediatrician, but she was never too tired to attend to a sick neighbor's child after hours. I remember many dinners interrupted by somebody just not feeling well and walking over. She was the kindest person I ever had the privilege to meet. She is. I have two daughters. It gives me tremendous pride to watch them grow and become strong and independent young women, both working very hard in achieving their goals. I am very lucky to have met my friends. They are strong, successful, and independent women, leading me by their example. I was welcomed in Canada by my great aunt Celia and her family. They opened their house for us and helped us stay. They showed us great kindness, generosity, and support. Now a little bit about my personal journey. My story probably begins the same way every immigrant story begins. When we came to Canada, we only had. In our case, we had the allowed $200 for the three of us. Boris and me, age 26, and three-year-old Yana, our daughter. By many standards, we had nothing. Yet somehow we were not worried. We knew we had everything we needed with us. And we arrived carrying some things across the border no customs official could take away. We had our willingness and ability to work hard, our education and creativity, our openness to new ideas and possibilities. My parents are the hardest working people I know. And I learned all of that from watching my father fight fiercely to succeed against all odds and obstacles. When we arrived to Canada, a lot of people would try to give us helpful advice, asking us what we did. When I, very proudly, freshly graduated from prestigious Vera Muhina Academy of Art and Design, the degree that commanded respectable vow in Russia would say so, the advice was unanimous. You're still young, we can learn something useful like computer programming. <laughs> My family often complains that I don't listen. That is true. This is my worst and my best quality, so I did not listen. I chose not to hear that you cannot make a living doing something you love and spend the last 20 years of your life studying. I chose not to hear that no gallery will buy paintings outright and probably would never even look at the works of unknown artists. Yes, of course, I worked all kinds of jobs, some better than others, but I never stopped painting. I always found time, big or tiny scrubs, with by then two kids, often when I put them to bed, to pull out my paints and brushes. I loaded my car with paintings, and after dropping the girls off at school, equipped, equipped with maps and yellow pages listings of every art gallery and art shop in the area, I proceeded to knock on doors. And some doors did open. I met wonderful people who loved my work and believed in me who supported and continue to support me for the last 20 years and became not just business partners, but friends. I'm very lucky to have so many galleries from Utah to Colorado, from England to Canada, exhibit and promote my work, and to see such an emotional response from my, many of my collectors and fans at my openings. I put my passion into my paintings, and it they exude the happiness of not just the subject matter, but the process itself. I am so lucky to have met my husband, Boris. He's not only my best friend, but my biggest fan and supporter. He loves even the worst of my paintings. <laughs> he laughs at my jokes, and he had to listen to this speech over and over. <laughs> I consider myself lucky for many reasons. Many of them I already talked about. My family and friends, fans and collectors my work. I feel very lucky that Canada opened its doors to us. We left Russia at a very tumultuous time, and Canada accepted us as immigrants. We feel very privileged and honored to be Canadian, the country whose political standing and cultural values I admire and proudly display my Canadian flag pin everywhere I travel. It is never a question in our mind what a privilege it is to become a part of Canadian society and that we need to justify and deserve it, that we need to be good to Canada the same way it was good to us. I am lucky. I always feel very lucky, even if I tear a tendon on my finger. I, the first thought that came to my mind was how lucky I was it could have been my painting hand. <laughs> I choose to be lucky. I believe in luck. I believe that luck happens when you work hard 
despite the setbacks and obstacles, that when you put your heart and soul in achieving your dream. I want to finish my, with my favorite quote, dreams do not work unless you do. Congratulations, Maya, what a great story. I have a 15-year-old who wants to be a rock star. <laughs> I'm going to let her do it. <laughs> I know she'll be a great one. She'll be happy. Look at you. That's a wonderful story. <laughs>